Old guy here. Today we're going to talk about torque wrenches. My torque wrenches are made by Precision Instruments. One reason I use their instruments is, one, they're made in the USA. Two, it's the only tool, well, it's the only tools they make. All right, so they're not making a bunch of other tools. They're just making torque wrenches and associated products for it. So i am got a little cheat sheet here. Um, they were incorporated in 1938. They were the first ones to do a torsion bar type wrench. They came out with a split beam wrench in torque wrench in 1974, uh, later clicker types in 1990. They make split, split beam clicking torque wrenches. They make micrometer uh, clicking torque wrenches, they make dial indicator type torque wrenches, they make drivers, a torque comparator, and anyway, they make torque wrenches. They're made well, they're made in the USA. Um, we're going to go up to the bench and I'm going to show you the three I have and I'm going to compare it to an old Craftsman I have. Now my Craftsman's, I don't know, 30 plus years old. It's made out of all steel too. I prefer a clicking type type torque wrench myself. Um, I know a lot of people are now using the digital type. That's fine. I just prefer the click type. I prefer a company that makes it here. They service their torque wrenches. Uh, the service form varies between $75 and $115. Now, I don't have one of those nice digital torque meters that other people use on their videos. Take the Proto one it's $1,600 and all the others are comparable. I have a comparer that works okay for me, uh, but $1,600, I'm not using the torque wrench that much to need it. And I figure if I need to send these in every three or four years, or even every two years, at about $75 a torque wrench, you know, that's, uh, I could send all three of them in that'd be $225, so it's eight times. So that's 16 years I could send it in before I'd ever need the torque uh, meter. What a lot of people don't realize is that torque wrenches, not all of them, but these torque wrenches at least, can be used in either direction. They can be used to right-hand thread, left-hand thread. Now most cars are right-hand thread, so you tighten it up and it clicks and you're fine. But the other thing is, talking to Precision Instruments um, one day, uh, about a month ago, I asked them if the torque wrench could be used to remove fasteners. Now, I'm not talking about using it as a ratchet where you're just back and forth. I'm talking about loosening it up. I'll take my TDI. And I know I've talked about the bolts holding on to rear calipers and they're kind of a pain and not a whole lot of room back there. They're, like a lot of things on VW and Audis these days, torques are, they give a torque range like 95 foot-pounds, and then they want you to put it on even tighter, another 90 degrees. I don't understand why they just don't give you a total torque, but they don't. When I was talking to Precision Instruments, I was talking to the guy, and he said that, very nice fellow, great customer service. I asked him if I could undo a fastener with it. Now, when I put on those bolts on the rear of my car, I went up to 95 foot-pounds and clicked it, but then I took my torque wrench and I ran it up to 150 pounds. I marked the bolt so I could tell when I got to 90 degrees and I ran it up to 150 pounds. Well, that didn't quite give me 90 degrees, so I cranked it up to 200. And it, it didn't click before I got to 90 degrees. You know, this gave me an idea that this torque on this bolt is somewhere between 150 and 200. And I asked him, can I take off the bolt the same way I put it on? And he said, yes, because they're designed to go in both directions. For that same bolt, I would crank my torque wrench up to 200 foot pounds and I would loosen it with it. Won't hurt it as long as you don't go past the click. If it clicks, Turn it up a little higher and keep going. And then if it loosens, you're fine. Then you can pull out a regular ratchet and undo it. Torque wrenches work in both directions. 
So these are my Precision Instruments torque wrenches, along with my old Craftsman. So this, this is a quarter inch drive clicker type. Um, it's not a split beam, obviously. And it goes from 40 inch pounds to 200 inch pounds. Here we have the 3 8. It goes from 20 foot pounds to 100 foot pounds. And we have the half inch. Now I like this half inch. It has a really long handle. As you can see, compared to my old Craftsman, it's another good six to eight inches longer. Allows you to put a little more uh, oomph on it. This runs from 50 foot pounds to 250 foot pounds. Now, the way these work is you pull down this ring and then you crank it up to whatever you want. And then you put the ring back and you're locked in at that particular place. You pull it down, you turn it down, and you don't want to go beyond what you need to. And this one's 20 foot pounds. So crank it down to 20. Uh, is that 20? That's yeah, it's 20. That's no, 20. 30. Okay, so we crank it down to 20. You put your ring back. And that's the way you store it. You don't want to go below the lowest setting on your torque wrench because it can mess with the springs that you use to figure out the torque. Now this old Craftsman, I've had it 30 plus years. Uh, it's been good. I usually mainly use it for torquing on my lug bolts. It's handy, I grab it, it just do it. The others are in the case, but anyhow. So like I said before, torque wrenches are designed to go in two directions, at least these from Precision Instruments and even this old Craftsman are. You have left and right hand threads, but basically you can use this to break loose a fastener that, you know, like I was saying before, I went up to 95 foot pounds and I still had to go to 90 degrees. So I cranked, actually I was using this one, I cranked it up to 150. And when it got to 150 there, I took out this one because it's got a lot of longer handle and it's easier to torque, to put pressure on. And I ran it up to 200 and I got to 90 degrees before 200. And talking to the guy in Precision Instruments, I can use this to loosen that fastener. Now we're gonna go over to my comparator, which is like a torque tester. And we're gonna see how close these come out. So I'm adding one thing to this. This is my, they call it a comparator. Instructions are you zero it before each use. You exercise the torque wrench. You apply a slow, steady force to the wrench. And you note the reading at the time of the click, not after the click. So I'm going to show you my three of my torque wrenches and how they get used, they can be used in either direction. So first up, we're gonna use the 3 8 Gotta use an adapter. Um, this is also made, like I said, by Torque Wrench. So this is set at, what's it set at? It's set at 50 foot pounds. So we come down, that's pretty damn close. Now, the other way is, remember, this is a torque wrench that works in both directions. That one's a little higher, isn't it? Hmm. So it's a little off going in the left, but you don't use the left that much. So next up, we have a half inch. It's set at 100 foot pounds. So we're going to go real slow and see where it clicks. Pretty close. Now we're going to go in the opposite direction. Oh, 
Okay, so it looks like both of these in the opposite direction are a little bit high. This is my old Craftsman. It is set at 90. I set it at 90 for this particular use because that's what I use for basically putting my lug nut, lug bolts on my VWs and my Audis. Okay, it's a little high it looks like. Let's try it again. One click before 100. So, still pretty close. Anyway, so interesting, I, I haven't done much as far as taking it off, using it to take off bolts, because I only talked to the guy last month, but I will be using it to loosen up some torque bolts. So it's interesting that the torque value is a little bit higher than what it reads when you're going in the off direction. I'm going to try that again. Remember this is set at 100. Oh, a little higher. Anyway, these are my torque wrenches. These are my thoughts. This is what I do. You don't have to.